Mr. Freeze at Six Flags Over Texas and Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags St. Louis are two of the most intense coasters in the country. One of the best clone coaster models out there, if not the best. These attractions are among the best in their respected parks. I've been wanting to make this review for a while, but I've decided to wait until I wrote it forwards. Thankfully, I got to ride it forwards at Six Flags Over Texas 13 times at the start of June, and along with a couple hundred backwards rides I've had across both versions of Mr. Freeze, it's safe to say that I have a great feel for this ride, so I'll be giving my thoughts on it in today's review. As usual, let's first go over the stats of Mr. Freeze. The tallest point of the coaster's structure is 218 feet. This technically makes Mr. Freeze a hyper coaster. However, since it's a shuttle coaster, not everyone in the train reaches the same height. If I had to take a guess, the highest point the train gets is maybe 190 feet, give or take a few. The coaster launches riders from 0 to its top speed of 70 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds. This isn't the most powerful launch, but it does the job well. Finally, Mr. Freeze has a track length of 1300 feet. This isn't a long track length at all, but that's because it's a shuttle coaster. Both Mr. Freeze clones reside in different areas of the respective parks. At Six Flags St. Louis, the ride is located near the middle of the park in the DC Comics Plaza, while the one at Six Flags Over Texas is located in the Gotham City section towards the back of the park. Both coasters also play a key role in their park skyline, as they're among the tallest structures in each of them. The setting for both of these are pretty different. The one at Six Flags St. Louis is located on an island surrounded by Thunder River, which is the park's River Rapids ride. This setting allows you to see the coaster from just about any angle, and this makes St. Louis' Mr. Freeze my favorite coaster to get shots of. The same can't really be said about the one at Six Flags Over Texas, as you can't see much of the ride from as many areas of the park. Both also have a very loud and distinct roar that is impossible to miss. You can hear this coaster from anywhere in the park, and whenever Mr. Freeze is closed, the atmosphere is completely different without it. Despite being a crowd favorite ever since it opened, Mr. Freeze got off to a rough start. It was supposed to open in 1997, but problems with the coaster's launch system pushed the ride's opening to 1998. Mr. Freeze uses linear induction motors, or LIMs, to launch the train out of the station and to boost the train higher up the spike. This system requires a lot of electricity to function properly, and this means that both are prone to higher amounts of downtime than any other coaster in their respective park. I've seen both break down a lot, but the one at Six Flags Over Texas had more issues from my experience. That one tends to break down multiple times a day from what I've heard, and based on my two trips there in 2019 and 2024, it did go down a considerable amount. Once both coasters opened in 1998, the trains launched forwards out of the station, and it remained like this until 2012 when the trains returned backwards, and the ride was renamed Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. While the one at Six Flags St. Louis currently operates like this, the one at Six Flags Over Texas turned both trains back around to being forwards in September of 2022, and it regained its original name of Mr. Freeze. However, in July of 2023, one of those trains was turned backwards once again, so now one train launches forwards and the other one backwards. I think this is a genius idea, as it allows guests to pick which way they want to launch. I really wish they would do the same for the one Six Flags St. Louis as well. Both Mr. Freeze clones have lengthy queue lines, but the visuals of each of them differ drastically. At Six Flags Over Texas, the queue is fully indoors, and you enter Snowy's Ice Cream Factory. The walls have graffiti on them, and these seem to imply that the ice cream factory is abandoned. At Six Flags St. Louis, most of the queue is outdoors, and you have to cross over Thunder River to get to the right station. While this queue is a bit of a hike, it does offer the best views of the coaster, especially the section of the queue that runs right up to the bottom of the spike. From this vantage point, the track is only a few feet away from you, and it's an insane visual. The indoor part of the queue is a smaller version of Snowy's Ice Cream Factory, and there's blue lights that illuminate the hallways leading into the station. There's also some nice air conditioning, which is especially comfortable on a hot summer day. On both versions of Mr. Freeze, the path split off, but I usually see the version of St. Louis running one train, and that's the train to the right. This brings me to a tip of advice for getting multiple rides on St. Louis's in a short period of time. If you hear the ride running roughly every 90 seconds or so, that means they're probably on two trains. If that's the case, the train to the left of the split point is almost always a total walk-on for every single row, including the front row and back row. While both paths at Six Flags St. Louis take you to a backwards train, whichever path you take at Six Flags Over Texas will determine what train you get. If you take the path to the right, you'll get the forwards train. If you take the path to the left, you'll get the backwards train. I recommend trying both trains at Six Flags Over Texas, but I'll discuss whether I prefer it forwards or backwards later on. As for the best seat on each train, I only row the front row on the forwards train, so I can't speak to how the other rows are. The consensus for the forwards train is that the front is the best row by far. As for the backwards train, everyone says the back row is the best, which I can totally understand that. However, I think the front row and back row are equal in terms of quality. I say this because the launch feels identical in both rows, the back is better for the trip out, and the front is better for the return trip. I highly recommend trying the very front and very back on the backward train if you can, but if you can only ride that train once, I'd probably say do the back row since it goes the highest on the spike. Once it's your turn to ride, you're greeted with individual ratcheting lap bars. There's also a seatbelt that connects to the lap bar. These restraints aren't the most comfortable, but I imagine they're far better than the restraints these coasters open with. Both Mr. Freeze clones had over the shoulder harnesses for the first couple of years of operation, but in 2002 they were swapped out for lap bars. Due to the intensity, it's very easy for the positive forces to staple you, and it can be really uncomfortable. On a few of my rides at Six Flags Over Texas this year, the restraint was so tight on me at the end of the ride that it felt like the old restraints that Skyrush and Hershey Park used to have. It's time to get into the ride experience for this coaster, and throughout this element by element breakdown, I'll discuss how each element feels when riding it forwards as compared to riding it backwards, and I'll also state which direction I prefer this element in. Unlike a lot of the launch coasters, 
Rose is built by Premier Rides, Mr. Freeze doesn't immediately launch out of the station. Instead, the track slides over to line the train with the launch tunnel. This is what allows Mr. Freeze to run two trains, and it's one of the only shuttle coaches out there that does that. Once the train parks in the launch position, the ride operators might try and make a joke with those on the ride in an effort to surprise them with the upcoming launch. I personally love when ride ops do this, as it really adds excitement to the ride experience. However, you can tell when the ride is actually about to launch, and you can hear the brakes release behind you in the launch tunnel. There's also a siren that goes off outside the station when the ride's about to launch, and it's especially loud at Six Flags St. Louis. After the brakes release, the LIMs kick in, and the train launches from 0 to 70 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds. For me, the launch is easily the highlight of the ride when riding it forwards. The sense of speed is excellent. I also liked how it didn't let up at all, making it more intense. I also enjoy the launch facing backwards, but I much prefer it forwards. More often than not, I feel the launch lining up a bit towards the end of the launch tunnel when riding it backwards. Those riding it backwards will be thrown forward by the initial kick, especially if you're in the front row. After the launch, the train climbs into the most intense part of the ride, the inverted top hat. If you're riding it backwards, the positives going into it are ridiculous, and in the back row you get a great lateral snap as the train turns upside down. While riders up front don't get the same intensity entering this element, they do get some really solid airtime exiting it, and it's one of the main reasons why I'd recommend trying the front and back on the backwards train. Riding it forwards, you get some solid positives going into this element, and a quick airtime pop as the train turns upside down, but there isn't any notable force as the train exits the inversion. The inverted top hat on the trip out is definitely better backwards. This element on the trip out also happens to be the best hang time moment I've ever experienced. In April of 2021, my friend Ryan and I rode the back row, and we got a rollback since the train didn't launch fast enough. The position of the train couldn't have been better for us at this moment, as the very back row stopped perfectly at the very top of the inverted top hat. We were up there for a good 3-4 to four seconds, and the hang time was unbelievable. I've done several fantastic hang time moments, such as the inline twist on Thunderbird, the zero-g stall on Goliath, and the dive loop on Mystery Mine. But the hang time on all those elements paled in comparison to the inverted top hat on the rollback. After the inverted top hat, the train hits another valley with some good positives, and then climbs into an overbank turn. This is easily the weakest part of the ride, no matter which direction you're facing, as there's hardly any notable forces here either. I don't have a preference as to which direction this element is best taken in. After the overbank turn, riders get more positives on the valley that leads into the massive 218-foot spike. This element right here seems to be the decider as to whether people prefer it forwards or backwards. If you're riding it forwards, you stare straight up at the sky wall on this element. This was a very disorienting experience for me. Most people prefer the spike facing backwards, as you're facing straight down the ground. While most people prefer this element backwards, I personally prefer this element forwards. Staring straight up at the sky was, in my opinion, a far more insane experience than looking straight down the ground. That's likely because I've ridden it backwards a couple hundred times, so the visual staring down at the ground has gotten pretty old. No matter which way you're facing, this spike is excellent. There's also another set of LIMs halfway up the spike that propels the train even higher than it would go otherwise, and this makes it even more disorienting. If those LIMs don't kick in, the train won't have enough speed to make it back to the station since they also launch the train back down the spike. When this happens, it'll valley either at the bottom of the spike or between the overbank turn and inverted top hat. I've seen Mr. Freed's at Six Flags St. Louis Valley three times before, with two of them being while the train was rocking back and forth between the overbank turn and the inverted top hat. Once at the top of the spike, the same LIMs that propel the train up the spike send it back down, and this makes the descent far more thrilling. Much like going up the spike, I prefer this experience on the forwards train because dropping backwards almost 200 feet was more unique than dropping forwards. The valley at the bottom of the spike is super intense in both trains, but I think this valley is slightly more intense in the backwards train since I usually gray out, and I usually didn't gray out on the forwards train. Now the train navigates the layout in the opposite direction. First is the overbank turn, and this element taken backwards was probably the most surprising part of the whole ride in the forwards train. I wasn't sure how this element would feel, but getting pulled backwards through it was a lot more intense and a lot smoother than I was expecting it to be. In the backwards train, this element is especially good in the front because it's the most intense part of the ride up there. As for which train I prefer this element in, it's a very close race, but I have a very slight preference for the backwards train because the sense of speed you get on this element in the front row is insane. The valley that follows offers more solid positives, especially on the backwards train. And then you rise up into the inverted top hat once again. On the backwards train, you get a pop of airtime entering this inversion up front and you get some decent hang time in the back as you get pulled through it. In the forward train, you get solid hang time the whole way through this element and you get a pop of airtime exiting the inversion. I do prefer the forward train for this part. After exiting the inverted top hat, the train re-enters the launch tunnel with a decent amount of speed before coming to a smooth and gradual stop. This concludes your intense ride experience on Mr. Freeze. Now I gotta address the million dollar question. Do I prefer Mr. Freeze facing forwards or facing backwards? After riding both directions several times, I can confidently say my answer is forwards. A lot of people will say backwards is better, but there are a few reasons why I prefer riding Mr. Freeze forwards. First off, I really like the forwards launch. Due to how sustained the acceleration was and how fast it felt, it's actually my fourth favorite launch I've experienced at the launch is found on King Naka, Top of the Little Dragster, and Max Force. Second, I think the spike facing forwards is far more insane than backwards. Facing the sky before dropping backwards was an incredible sensation. The third, final, and biggest reason is that riding backwards has gotten kind of old for me. I'm in a weird situation unlike a lot of enthusiasts where I have Mr. Freeze in my home park at Six Flags St. Louis, so I've ridden it backwards a couple hundred times there. Because of that, I've taken this ride for granted, and it's not special to me anymore despite being an awesome ride experience every time, whereas riding it forwards was new for me. When I was really young, I remember spending countless hours 
Powers and Bugs Bunny Ford Fun, which is a kid play structure near Pandemonium, watching Mr. Freeze run. Both trains still ran forward back then, and I was so fascinated with this ride. Ever since I first rode it in 2016, I was wondering when or if I get the chance to ride it forwards. Finally getting to ride it forwards was a bucket list experience that I've been wanting to check off for a while, so that's mainly why I prefer Mr. Freeze forwards. I bet if I didn't have six flags and Lois as my home park, the likelihood of me preferring backwards over forwards would be quite high. To an extent, I think the same could be said if I had six flags over Texas as my home park. If you're someone who prefers backwards over forwards, I'm totally cool with that, as I can totally see why one would say backwards is better than forwards on Mr. Freeze. Before I give Mr. Freeze a final score, I'm going to address the smoothness of these two coasters. I personally think both of them track pretty well. I found the forwards train to be smoother than both backwards trains in Six Flags St. Louis, as well as the backwards train in Six Flags over Texas. I've also noticed that the one in Six Flags St. Louis can be a bit shaky at times, but it's hit or miss. Either way, both of these coasters are among the smoothest rides in the respective parks. Now comes the time where I have to give Mr. Freeze a final score. If you saw my review of the Batman the Ride clones, you may recall that I gave the entire model the same score. However, I personally feel like I have to give both Mr. Freeze clones a different score to account for both directions. So the score I'll be giving over Texas's is also my score for the forwards train, and the score I'll be giving St. Louis's will be for the backwards train. The score I'll be giving St. Louis's is a 9.5 out of 10. Riding it backwards is a super intense and disorienting experience, but like I said before, it's not special to me anymore since I ride it backwards all the time. As for the version of Six Flags over Texas, I'm actually giving it a perfect 10. At first, I would have given it a 9.5 just like the one in Six Flags St. Louis, but the more I rode the forwards train, the more I liked it. As for where each version of Mr. Freeze ranks for me out of 302 coasters, the one in Six Flags over Texas actually lands inside my top 10 at number 7. I have it this high primarily because of my experience on the forest train, but also because you get to choose which way you launch, which I think is a genius idea. I will say that if you're going to ride a forward sometime soon, I personally wouldn't go in expecting it to be in your top 10 like it was for me. Like I said before, getting to ride a forwards was a huge bucket list experience for me, and riding it backwards has become less special over the years. As for where the one in Six Flags St. Louis ranks, it's not ranked quite as high as it expects its counterpart, mainly because both trains launch backwards, so you can't choose which direction you launch in, but it still ends in my top 25 as it ranks at number 17. That concludes my review on Mr. Freeze at Six Flags St. Louis and Six Flags over Texas. What do you think of these amazing premiere rides creations? I want to know if you share the same opinion about these rides as I do, or if you weren't impressed with them. I also want to know what direction you prefer riding this coaster in, if you've done both of them, whether it's forwards or backwards. If you haven't ridden either of these two yet, let me know which direction you think you prefer. Post any thoughts you have about any of these topics in the comments below. Also, be sure to let me know what coaster you want me to review, and I'll see if I can do it. Of course, before you close out this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.